Hi, everyone. I'm James Latwell, your host today on uh, Authors on the Air, part of the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. And we're here today to talk to Claire Booth. Claire has a new book out called Home Fires, and I think you're going to want to check it out. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of background about Claire, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, Claire is formerly a crime reporter for daily newspapers throughout the United States. She's used this experience to write five previous Sheriff Hankworth mystery novels based on small town American life. And she's also the author of a nonfiction book, The False Prophet, Conspiracy, Extortion, and Murder in the Name of God. And she lives here in Northern California. She's an active member of Sisters in Crime and Mystery Writers of America. And welcome, Claire. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. I never get to see you, ever. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so this is a treat, though. Um, the latest uh, in the Hank series, Home Fires, really starts out with a, a, a ch putting Hank in a really challenging situation. He's got this mash casualty event and some secrets from the past that kind of start to creep up on him. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the story in Home Fires? So it uh, it starts off with an explosion at a um, fireworks storage warehouse. And so it becomes a mass casualty incident that Hank has to um, rush and deal with. So he has competing interests. The, the feds are involved, the, the state authorities, um, his sheriff's department, uh, all sorts of you know, conflicting interests there, um, as well as as grieving families and you know the community that's trying to make sense of this. Uh, in the meantime, um, they're kind of left high and dry. The uh, region's uh, pathologist, uh, the medical examiner, has just died um, uh, completely naturally, but uh, he is no longer available to you know handle this mass casualty incident. So they bring in someone new and that person uncovers um, some dereliction of duty uh, in the medical examiner's office. And that um, spins Hank off in a completely unanticipated direction. No, that's that's a, a good way to describe it. And the way you open the book up, it's in that the funeral for that now deceased mm -hmm. medical examiner. And it's a dark, serious time, but it's funny. I mean, the, the way Hank and, and those respond to the, to the situation, it's, it's, it's really, it's really great. I love that. Now, um, you've been working with Hank in this series for now six books. Um, yeah. So his character has changed a little bit over time, but maybe tell folks who maybe aren't familiar with the series, who Hank is and a little bit about him and his background and where he is now in, in Home Fires. Oh, okay. So uh, the series starts out, Hank has um, always been a police officer in Kansas City. Um, and he lived up there. His wife is a, an emergency medicine doctor. So she works in the hospital and they have two little kids. And they moved down to Branson in the Missouri Ozarks to help, uh, help out his widowed father-in-law, uh, his wife's dad. And um, so once they're there, he needs a job and he applies to the sheriff's office and instead of getting hired on as just a, a typical deputy um they make him sheriff the job had recently become vacant and so they appoint him to be the actual sheriff uh he has never been a manager before he's just been a, a patrol officer and a detective and suddenly he's put in charge of an entire department and a budget and staffing and all of these things that he doesn't really care about. He just wants to do police work. So, um, you know, he is trying to find his footing uh, in, in, in every book that takes a, a little bit different form um, in him getting used to kind of the, the insular small town of Branson and then uh, all the things that make Branson completely unique in the country, uh, you know, with its tourism and its country music theaters and, and all of those things. And so each book has him juggling that and juggling, um, you know, problems within his sheriff's department and uh, his his family and things like that. So it's been a lot of fun to to kind of play with that and have him develop, you know, over the course of the books. Yeah, and and he has, and he's been. It's fun to watch his his story 
and even some of the characters around him that you really don't have secondary characters in your book. They're all fully fleshed and, you know, like, like Sheila, his, his second in command, I get a kick out of her. Um, the, the characters are just done really well. And I, I appreciate that in, in your, in your books. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned Branson and small town America. How, how was it that you chose that locale as a setting for for this series? Uh, so that's a very legitimate question. You know, as I sit here in Northern California, why why am I writing uh, about the Missouri Ozarks? Uh, so I went to college at the University of Missouri in Columbia. And um, while I was there, I met a guy from Branson uh, who is now my husband. And so that's how I became familiar with uh, the town, uh, you know, he, he still has family there. And uh, it just, when I sat down to start writing fiction, uh, I was like, there's no, there no better place to set a series uh, because I, I get to have everything. I get to have the small town and the small town politics and all of the history that nobody ever forgets about when you live in a small town. Uh, but they get 7 million tourists a year. So I also get all the big city things that I need. I get, you know, a constantly refreshing pool of suspects if I want it and, uh, you know, big city crowd problems and, and things like that. So um, I thought, you know, I could have a lot of fun in a place like that. Yeah. And, and you know, you and I have talked about that before. And, and yeah, that I didn't know that Branson had that much of a, of a tourist draw. I knew it had some, but not to, mm -hmm. to the extent that you, you and I have talked about. And I mean, you've used that extensively in your books, like in your, in your last one, the whole, you know, breakfast theater kind of, kind of thing, you know, really played a central role in it. And that was kind of unique to that, that area. Yes. Yes. They, um, they don't necessarily have night shows. You know, you can't really find that many shows at eight in the evening. Um, because the demographic is older. And so there are plenty of eight in the morning breakfast shows. And um, I thought uh, I can make something out of that. So that was a lot of fun. That's neat. Now, now a little bit about you. I mean, you have a, a history as a successful journalist, you know, all over the country. You know, how did that transition happen from, you know, journalist to crime fiction author? And how does that background help you, you know, write the crime fiction that you write? Um, oh, it, de it definitely, definitely helps uh, because I covered it for so long that I, I do have a knowledge base, you know, to start with on how procedure works and how the court system works, uh, all of that, um, kind of how the, the minds of people work, um, and that just more from reporting on on anything you know you're getting to talk to people who uh aren't like you who have completely different life experiences and getting to to know them um i think has been very very valuable uh for all of my writing you know to just be able to put yourself in in the shoes of of someone who is different than you and that helps in then writing characters that are different from you or have different opinions and goals and, and things like that. So it's been, been very, very helpful as a background to have. Yeah. And I think you're, you're one of the, the crime fiction authors that pulls it off with writing procedurals, not having that, you know, law enforcement background. There's, there's really a few that can do that. You know, oh, well, yourself, thank you. Yeah, and, and I put you in the same category, like with Rachel Housel Hall. I mean, you they, you both don't have that background, but you pull it off with some real authenticity in the work, and it it sounds true, rings true. And for those of us that have worked in it, you know, it's it's like, yeah, okay, she's got it, she's got this going on. So that's well, that I mean, that's a huge compliment coming from you, who you know worked in that field um, for your whole career. So I uh, thank you very much. That means a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Now, how about that switch from, you know, being a journalist to writing crime fiction? Um, wh why did you make that that shift? And uh, 
what went into that uh, that work that shift there? So my first book was nonfiction, um, the the true crime book, and after that uh, was published, I put together a proposal for another true crime book, and um, that was right about in 2008 when the economy tanked. And so we couldn't sell it. My agent and I couldn't sell that one. And um, so I sat there and I was like, well, I'm not gonna do yet another true crime proposal because you know, the one in my drawer didn't sell. And um, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll try fiction. And it was very difficult. It honestly felt like uh, I was using different muscles in my brain, yeah. you know, because that you, you never make things up in, in journalism. And now all of a sudden I was telling my mind to, to start making things up. And so um, that was a very hard hurdle to, yeah, you know, to get over and to train my brain that that it was okay to, you know, <laughs> start making things up. Yeah, I bet that was a shift. That yeah, that that would be a tough uh, tough one to cover. Now, you've got six Hankworths out now, mm -hmm. uh, but I understand there's a couple more in in the pipeline. Can you kind of tell us where Hank is going to be going and what you're going to be putting him through? So yes, yeah, so the um. I am working on number seven right now. And so I have a deal for seven and eight. And, um, oh, let's see, seven is, uh, I gotta do some some personal, um, some personal issues need to be be worked out um, a, as a result of, of book six. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some, um, some cleanup to do <laughs> uh, as far as, as, as Hank's personal life goes. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. And uh, as far as the mystery or the case, it, um, it, it goes much more into the history um, of, of that area in the Ozarks, um, uh, you know, from the civil war on and so um that's been a lot of fun doing that research and and writing about that so no that sounds I'm fun yeah. yeah now i also understand you have a standalone thriller that's in the in the works out there can you give us a little bit of a hint about what that what that's about uh yes so i i've got a standalone that's out on submission right now so we'll see you know if that gets picked up um, it is, yeah, obviously not related to Hank in any way. It's set in the Bay Area and it's a, it's a thriller. So it involves a, a young, recently, recent college graduate, uh, couple who, um, decide to strike a blow for, uh, income equality, um, by, by doing some questionably illegal, illegal things. Um, and then it all goes off the rails. <laughs> of course it does. Yes. So that's great. Yeah, I think that I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you're actively involved in the in the writing community. You're you're the president of our Sisters in Crime, crime chapter here, Capital mm -hmm. Crimes, and you make us all call you Madam President, which, you know, I respect. <laughs> no, 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 no. Only you. I only make you do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, my mistake. <laughs> um, how important is it do you think for authors to become involved in the writing community, whether it's through Sisters in Crime or MWA or, or other organizations? Oh, um, I, I would say very important. I think that um, it is beneficial in so many different ways. Um, one, you are, are meeting people just so just in terms of, you know, a, a personal life and and meeting you know potentially new friends and things like that it's very valuable um it's valuable as far as a learning tool 
Uh, you have people at all different stages of their career. And so you have different information you can draw on. Different people, you know, are experts in different things um, or have already, you know, done a certain process in the in the publishing pipeline and, you know, might have some tips or advice. Um, you, you know, those things have come in very handy for me in the past. And, you know, then, of course, you try to do the same thing, you know, if people need your experience or, or advice. Uh, so, yeah, I would say, you know, join and you can do the, the good thing about both of, you know, the organizations that that we mutually belong to. MWA and Sisters in Crime is you can do as much or as little as you want. Um, you know, it's not join and you're committed to, you know, a billion hours of, of participation. Right. It's, right. You, you, you join and you can take advantage of, of whatever classes or webinars or meetings or get togethers that you want um, or not. And so it's, it's very, easy and relaxed, but I, I think it, it's definitely, you know, I don't think I could do this without those kinds of, um, networks and, and, um, you know, professional and then personal contacts. So, yeah, it, it does help. It, it gives you that that feeling that you're not alone because everything we do is just so solitary <laughs> yes. and then you, you get you get back out there in, in the real world and you know other people are going through the same thing and it it does help to kind of validate okay i'm i'm, I'm okay i'm doing what i'm right. doing and it's okay yeah yeah uh one of the things i, I like to do with uh, folks that come on is something called three quick hits and it's about your character hank and the first thing that comes to mind for three questions Ooh, okay, okay. Easy peasy. Um, <laughs> what's what's Hank's favorite music? Uh, um, alternative, Wilco, Uncle Tupelo, kind of that that kind of sound. Okay, I can see that. How about Frank uh, Hank's favorite cocktail or drink? Hmm. Oh. I can give you Sheila's. That's a bourbon straight, um, <laughs> preferably high quality. Um, Hank, probably maybe a Negro Modelo. Okay, maybe that fits. Likes those. I, like, I like that. And then finally, um, Hank's greatest fear. That that his family would would not be okay mm -hmm. that keeping his family safe and well and happy is is his his biggest goal his yeah that makes sense perfect sense for hank so where can folks find you next out on the road and how can they connect with you on on social media oh so i will be at the avid reader in davis on may 9th with uh, Susan C. Shea um, from the Bay Area Sisters in Crime. And um, yeah, we're gonna be having a fun conversation. Um, she also has a recently released book, um, Murder and the Missing Dog, which is set in France. So um, I think cool. we'll have a, a fun time um, on that. And then I am, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and uh, kind of on Twitter, but not super good on that. Um, but I, yeah, I, I'm enjoying Instagram. So you can definitely, you know, find me there. Good deal. Well, Claire, this has been a lot of fun talking with you and chatting about your new book, uh, Home Fires. It's out, folks. So, you know, it's not independent bookstore day, but you can always go order it or get it yeah. at your local bookstore. So please do that. And th it's been a blast talking with you again, Claire. Oh, you too. Thanks a lot, Jim. Alrighty. Take care, everyone. We'll see you later.